Hey everybody, good morning. Welcome to another episode of Bob's Woodshop. Okay, today we're going to um, put this particular bowl away. This is the one that I did the other day. This is still very green wood. Uh, and this one is one I did about at least a year or so ago. So typically my process of getting these things preparation for the final turning, which is what we're going to do on this one, I will uh, moisture meter it. This one's at 26 0.2% moisture. Uh, Tony is four, five, six weeks old, something like that. This one is a piece of oak, and this is down to 6.2% moisture. So this is ready to go. Anything under nine, eight, nine, you should be able to uh, turn. You can see what happens. I was explaining before. This uh, has has gone oval, and the reason I leave that nice and thick is so that uh, we can turn it today we'll turn that oval out of it and then the, um, the bowl should be round so on this one what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into a paper bag uh, I've already put the anchor seal on it and then I'll also put a wood shavings in there and I'll put it up in my attic uh, this one has been up there uh, for at least a year um, I usually then date the bag, sometimes I'll mark it right on here or the bag and I'll put where I got the wood from, the type of wood, and the age on, or the date at which I turned it. I'm going to start this at about 750 RPMs. Of course, I'm getting a lot of wobble right now because it's an oblong bowl. It's uh, kind of football shaped. Okay, the whole trick to this is trying to get a very smooth uh, transition, a very nice bowl shape here. And once you get that, uh, then you try your best to get that on, uh, to match the outside to the inside. So I'm okay with that. I'm probably just going to work on this right here a little bit more, a little bit of a bump, and I'll be back to you. Okay, so I'm good with that, and uh, that really didn't take too long. Uh, it is nice and dry, so now that I got the outside, I'm going to work on the inside. Here's a look at the, uh, the wood itself. Yeah, nice piece of red oak. Really not too many features on here, it's really not an interesting piece of wood. But, hey, it'll be a very functional bowl. Okay, so I got the, uh, the tool rest set up. I got my banjo in place. I made sure that everything's tight in the chuck. And again, take a look. I got uh, about three quarters of an inch there and about an inch and an eighth right there. So I'm gonna be going for a total thickness of about three eighths of an inch. Lathe speed is 755. Gonna approach slowly. Okay, because this is an interrupted cut, so you definitely go in slowly. And take a little bit. In turning, you are not in a hurry. If you're in a hurry, stop and go get a cup of tea. I'm 
going to put my hearing protection on. This is uh, pretty loud. And this, this is a very dry piece of wood. start to see where uh, we're getting the wobble out of that and now this whole diameter is maybe about five eighths maybe a tad more you can also tell right here everything's everything has a cut on it but right there I'm going to uh, change the tool rest to make sure that this this surface is nice and flat. Again, make sure nothing's uh, no interference. Whoa, whoa. Whenever I do this edge, because it's wavy this way also, so I take a very very small cut on here to avoid any catches. little tear out right here here huh, that's actually on the side drain Okay, let's start working on the uh, final passes here. Yeah. Yeah, about three or four more. Let me switch out the uh, tool rest again.
Okay, this is a nice big bowl. This thing is probably, oh, I don't know. Looks like about 13 inches. Oh, nope, it's uh, 11 and a quarter inch. And critical thing is to make sure the thickness is consistent from here all the way down. So right there, I got about five eighths. I got about an inch there, a little bit more than an inch. Oh man, and good inch and a quarter down there. So I gotta work all this surface down. going to be doing I'm going to be using my easy wood tool uh, little scraper to get down to uh, final uh, final thickness So pay particular attention here where this is nice and uh, nice and true. All the runout has been taken out. That's what I was talking about of taking out the oval uh, through the drying process. passes Five A's, five A's, five A's, about half there, a couple more passes. I want you to watch my uh, body movement here. I'm starting with my weight, way to the right, and I'm leaning to the left and shifting my weight in order to try to get as smooth as cut as possible. Um, that's you get a much smoother cut versus trying to move your hands in here. So watch this. And a reposition. Okay, I'm 
liking that a lot. Got some tar, it's going to come out with some sanding. And they're pretty consistent all the way down. Now one of the other things, I don't like that sharp edge. And what I usually do with that is very, very gently scrape that into a round, uh, round that over a little bit. I usually do this with a bowl gouge. This is a good old uh, half-inch Thompson bowl gouge. And I use a, a scraping cut very, very lightly. Now the reason I do that very, very lightly is because I've actually had uh, a bowl break. So I learned and If you wanted to play it safe, you could also do this with a uh, some sandpaper. And I'm going to finish that with sandpaper. Okay, so now I'm pretty consistent. I got about... Uh, a shy half inch all the way down and with a nice dry piece of wood like this I think I'm going to call that quit and uh, almost start the sanding process. I do one other thing. Okay so from here I've got a nice round shape. I've got a relatively sm smooth surface. I'm going to have to do some sanding like everybody else. Uh, I like the outside shape. I've matched it very good to the inside. And I'm going to do some sanding now. Like I said before, sanding is no fun for anybody. And watching sanding is almost as much fun as watching paint dry. So I'm going to come back to you once this is sanded up. All right, I got this situated. Again, I made sure that my headstock and tailstock are properly lined because there's a little bit of play right here. Just probably like a 30 second of an inch. But I used my uh, double morse taper to do that, especially needed for this operation. Here is a really handy tool. This is a morse taper that goes inside your chuck. Right. So it's a lot easier not to take the chuck off at this point in time. And this enables you to stick the uh, stick that morse taper in here. Make sure you're definitely centered and then you can turn on the vacuum chuck so, so the goal here is so we got to turn off the uh, tenon now we can uh, Loosen up the chuck. Pull it out of the way. This bad boy is on there. So I want to do that. Now, even though I'm nice and tight in there, I'm still gonna I'm still gonna put a, a live center in there just as an added layer of protection. I know the philosophy that always use a Tailstock support when you can, just in case. This thing is not going to fly off out of here in case I do something stupid. And always start it slow. Yeah, I'm using my uh, pumps and bowl gals. I'm not licking the sand on this. I'll be back in a second. Sand that I actually even sanded with the grain on this. Because it's 
real easy to do. And one final, one final thing, just to put a little bit of interest. A lot of times when I'm doing bowls, I like to uh, do some type of texturing tool. But this, this um, grain is so open, I don't think it's going to do very good. So I'm just going to put a, a couple lines in there. Again, look how nice and true this is. That oval is all gone. So whenever you uh, make a bolt, put something on there because the, uh, the second thing people look at is how you finish the bottom. So it's a real simple design. There's a million ways to do that, but that's what I'm going to do for now. And uh, here's how easy it comes off. And uh, I'd say that is a success. I really like this a lot. Uh, I like the shape of it a lot. I'm not real crazy about oak. Like I said, I think this will be a good utility bowl. This would be good on your... As, on your uh, this would be good on your as a centerpiece on your table, put a bunch of uh, pine cones. Okay, we're all standing up. My beautiful assistant, M.A., has put uh, some little decorations on the bottom. And now we're going to be ready to put on the uh, finish. I really like using Mahoney's uh, uh, wanted oil. Okay, so I'm going to put a lot of that on. Mike recommends a very heavy coat and just one coat. Come on, come a little closer. Come closer. This is a very, very good finish. And it goes on very easily. You really can't beat it. I'll put some more on here. Oops. And again, what I said earlier, I think this, this turned out really well. I may even put little bumps in here, or I'm sorry, little dots around here, as well as the dots here. Put my name in the year. And uh, that's how you make a bowl blank. I'm sorry, that's how you make a finished bowl out of a bowl blank. So, very liberal coating. Put lots of it on. This thing looks great. I'm hoping that you would agree. And uh, I'll just keep applying this, really let it soak in. The wood's very, very dry. So I'm going to just uh, keep rubbing it in for four or five minutes. And uh, yeah, so that's the two-step process of doing the original rough cut, and this is the final cut. This final bulb took maybe about an hour and a half. I was taking my time. And some of that time was done on video, and uh, it came out good. So again, thanks a lot for watching, and uh, have a great day, and hang in there with the coronavirus.